the Flauros, one of Silent Hill's most mysterious devices. An item with no real explanation or origin, whose existence changes the course of the game's story forever. What is the Flauros, and why is it capable of what it is in Silent Hill and Silent Hill Origins? Today we'll explore the history behind the term and its roots in demonology. Flauros is the name of a demon, sometimes spelled in vastly different ways, depending on which grimoire is being referenced. It may be Haurez, Havrez, Flavros, or in the earliest possible references, Floron. His is a name which has appeared in countless lists of demons in magical history, most famously in the Lemigeton, or the Lesser Key of Solomon. The Lemigeton is a magical text collected in the mid-1600s, supposedly having been written by the famous King Solomon of Jewish history. It's incredibly unlikely, given the time the book first appears and the fact that much of what is written in it is taken from other older works of magic. The Lemigeton describes how one may summon up demons to do their bidding, and then lists the 72 demons who were once servants of King Solomon. According to esoteric lore, the king was the owner of a powerful magic ring, which allowed him to ensnare demons to his will. Multiple apocryphal texts of the ancient world include stories in which Solomon is mentioned alongside demons and this magic ring. The Apocalypse of Adam includes a story where Solomon sends demon servants chasing after a runaway. The Testament of Solomon claims the king built his temple using demonic slave labor, and that the ring was given to him by the Archangel Michael. Seventy-two is a powerful magic number in Jewish mysticism. It is said that God has seventy-two names, each three letters, which become important in certain magical practices. The Lemigeton says that Solomon had seventy-two demons, a very specific coincidence, and Flauros is demon number sixty-one. He is a duke of hell, commanding legions of demons. Should you trap him inside a magic triangle, he will answer your questions on any topic, especially divinity. Unlike other demons, he can speak of Christ and God without suffering physical pain. If you don't trap him before you ask your questions, he will lie and mislead you. He can answer questions ranging from the past, present, and future, for he knows all. He can appear as a man, though he typically takes the shape of a leopard hybrid with sharp claws. His eyes burn with flame as fire is one of his abilities, and he is known for destroying his master's adversaries by burning them. He can even be commanded to destroy other demons. Similar depictions of him appear in multiple grimoires besides the Lemigeton. The Dictionnaire Infernal, an 1818 grimoire, says he has a frightful face with burning eyes. Johann Weyer's 1577 grimoire, Suedo Monarchia Demonum, says he will suffereth the conjurer not to be tempted, that he thwarts other demons' attempts to undermine Flauros's master. He's listed in the Discovery of Witchcraft from 1584, and the Livre de Esprit from the 1400s. In these texts, he shares a common description, often down to the specific wording, though the spelling of his name may vary. He is a demon who answers questions concerning all of time, who wields enormous power and fire, with special abilities many demons on these lists don't have. Knowledge of the future, the ability to speak of the holy, the capability to destroy even other demons and keep them from controlling a human master. If we go further back, another demonic name is tied to similar abilities and King Solomon, a demon named Floron, who appears in multiple Italian works from the 1200s onward. In these cases, 
he is heavily associated with mirrors. He can answer your questions on the past, present, and future, and on divinity, as is mentioned in later grimoires, but the vessel he uses to answer is a hand mirror. Multiple mirrors of this type were found in people's bedrooms from the era, hidden under pillows, marked with the magical names thought to be required for the spells. One text says he was once a cherubim, who was mentioned by Solomon in his works, and who was confined to a steel mirror to answer questions put to him. But unless you trap him in a triangle, he could still deceive you. One story told of a man who asked about finding a hidden treasure, and was told he would find enough to last him the rest of his days. He found four ounces of gold, and immediately died in a landslide. The Mirror of Florin is a ritual mentioned in multiple texts, and while the use of the mirror is unique, most of its other aspects match with Flauros, and it may be an earlier origin of the demon. Perhaps the most famous mention of Flauron is the case of Secco d'Escoli, an Italian astronomer who was burned at the stake by the Inquisition. His written works were banned and meant to be destroyed, but the Inquisition's attempt to erase him did the opposite. Three of his works were saved and are available today, including one in which he discusses the mirror of Floron. He states there are evil spirits generated in the sky who could be coerced by incantations under certain constellations to perform many marvels. While he walks the reader through the process of summoning Floron, he makes sure to tell them that Demon's ultimate intention is to deceive Christians. The reason Floron uses a mirror, it seems, is because it is a bright body, a phrase mentioned multiple times in both the text and the ritual. It is a shiny surface that presents an illusion, and demons are masters of manipulating illusions to fool humans. Some versions of these grimoires are vague as to the use of the triangle in summoning the demon Flauros. Sometimes it seems to imply being in the triangle is what allows the demon to lie. Most later texts seem to say the opposite. The triangle in terms of Solomon's Lemigeton is a magical shape used to keep the demon summoner safe during the summoning. The triangle was to be drawn on the floor facing the cardinal direction the demon ruled over, two feet from the magic circle the summoner would sit in, drawn in black with the name of Michael written on white ground, with three names outside the triangle written in red. Only then could the summoner safely perform the spell and expect the demon to answer their questions truthfully. In Silent Hill, the Flauros appears as a triangular device. In the first game, all we know of it is what Dahlia says of it, and what she says is incredibly revealing. When Harry arrives at the Balkan church, Dahlia speaks as if she knew he was coming, that it was foretold. Harry reacts in shock, but she simply continues, saying she sees everything. She then tells him to follow the path, which is concealed by Flauros. Flauros will break through the walls of darkness and protect him from the other world. In this short scene, Dahlia references many of the major powers of Flauros. She mentions knowing all and foretelling the future, and the fact that the demon is able to repel the powers of other demons. It seems her foreknowledge is probably due to the device, and she gives it to Harry to hide him from Alessa, setting the trap for later. In Origins, the Flauros is divided into pieces across town, each named for one of the demon's powers, past, present, future, truth, and falsehood. In the game, Dahlia uses the device on her daughter, dividing her power among the pieces, hiding them throughout town. Once Travis collects them, he faces a creature that seems to have come from within the device. It's fought within a dream, and while its identity is ambiguous, it seems a logical step to assume the creature is the demon Flauros. It manifests from a dream, just as the Incubus boss does in the first game, and the Incubus too is associated with Flauros. 
In Silent Hill 4, Jasper's t-shirt has the monster's design alongside one of the demon's names, Halrez. Both creatures are also heavily associated with fire. Alessa's house catches fire when the god's summoning is first attempted, and the Incubus uses fire to kill Dahlia. If Alessa's power is in the Flauros, and so is the demon, and the creature born from her is similar in many ways, perhaps we can infer that the birth of the god is heavily associated with Flauros, that it was in some way used for the ritual, and may even be the creature that was summoned which was then trapped in the device. Outside of game lore, the dev team states that the Flauros was found in an ancient ruin. We can assume that they mean the ruins of Solomon's temple, destroyed shortly after the man's death. If the Flauros is meant to be the demon of legend who served the king, that must be where it was eventually found. A note in Origins claims the device was once in the hands of a man named Cheng Qian, a real-world historical figure from ancient China. Zhang Chen was an official and diplomat during the Han Dynasty, doing a great deal of work connecting China with cultures outside its borders. The note says he joked about having a demon trapped in a three-sided box, and later died in a fire. This is obviously meant to imply the demon killed him. The second figure mentioned in the note is a Lutheran monk named M.G. Lewis. M.G. Lewis was also a real person, a writer, Matthew Lewis, who was often referred to as Monk Lewis because of the major success of his book, The Monk, A Romance. It was a gothic horror story, depicting a holy man's fall from grace due to his own sins and a demon's trickery, eventually having his soul claimed by the devil. The Silent Hill note says he owned the device, connecting the Flauros to another story of demons and deception. The story of Origins plays with many of the themes of Flauros' power, ideas of truth and lie, past and future, blurring together. The mirrors used to travel through the world into nightmarish versions of reality play upon the idea of Flauros reflecting illusions through the hand mirror, and the deceptions that run through the story, both those presented by outsiders and by Travis himself are also tied deeply into the ideas of Flauros as a deceiver and a revealer, obscuring reality, yet also holding the key to the truth. Thank you for listening to this week's Silent Hill Symbolism. If you like my work, please consider supporting it through Patreon, Ko-fi, or YouTube. You can also buy my Silent Hill books or Silent Hill t-shirts through the links in the description. I'll see you all next time. Or will I? Perhaps you'll never know.